Hey everybody, it's Von Seibin, and we're checking out the new Chromebox from Acer. This is their CXI2, and they had a CXI last year that looks almost identical to this one, but this one is a little bit faster, so we'll be putting it uh, through its paces in a few minutes. Now, I should say at the outset here, in my normal list of full disclosures, that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, I've had no direct contact with Amazon or Acer in the creation of this review. All the opinions you're about to see are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it is posted and uh, no one is paying for this video either. You can read more about my disclosures in the video description down below. So this particular model is equipped with a Broadwell Celeron 3205U processor from Intel. Uh, this is an upgraded version of the chip that last year's model had and as a result this one is faster as you'll see in a minute. Now these Broadwell Celerons are different than the Celerons we see in a lot of Chromebooks. So a lot of those slower $200 Windows devices and a lot of the $150 Chromebooks books for that matter, uh, sometimes have Celeron chips in them, but they're not the same as the one in here. This is the faster one, so it's very zippy. Uh, when you boot it up, things really do uh, appear to be desktop class, at least so far as web browsing is concerned, and that's typically what most people do with Chrome. Now, if you've never seen one of my Chrome OS reviews before, you should know that Chrome OS is very different than Windows or Mac OS, so uh, definitely look at my Chrome uh, 101 video, which I'll link to above to get an idea as to how Chrome OS operates, because you should really know what you're getting into. Uh, before you get it. So we talked about the processor in here. Uh, this model has a four gigabyte RAM option installed along with 16 gigabytes of storage. So you can get this one with the four gigs of RAM for 220. They have an identical version with two gigs of RAM uh, and the 16 gigabytes of storage with the same processor for $177. Both models come with a wired keyboard and mouse. They're nothing exciting, but they work. Uh, so you get pretty much everything you need except the monitor uh, for the price. So not too bad of a deal there. There's also a faster version of this with an i3 and an i5 processor. This is upgradable, however, it's really hard to get into it because the case is hard to get off. It's also very hard to get at the RAM and the SSD because they have positioned them on the backside of the motherboard. So you have to take everything apart to get at those things. So I would suggest looking at uh, probably the Asus Chromebox if you want something that's easily upgradable. Uh, but these devices are typically a little tricky to get other operating systems loaded onto them. So I would uh, suggest, unless you're really interested in hacking away at it, uh, plan to use Chrome OS on this particular one just to save yourself some headaches. There's easier ways to get this same hardware on uh, some bare bones NUX or other mini PCs. On the back here, we've got a bunch of ports to look at. You got gigabit ethernet, you have two USB 3.0 ports here, HDMI and display port. It will drive 4K displays, although you'll see some issues with 4K video in a few minutes. You have a headset, headphone, microphone adapter right there, so a combo jack, as well as a lock to lock it down on a desk. And there is a fan on it, which will be on all the time. So it does make a little bit of noise, not a lot, uh, but you will hear it when it is on. This is typical of all the uh, Chrome boxes from every manufacturer we've seen in this form factor. It doesn't typically go faster because usually you're not taxing the chip all that much in Chrome, but it is audible, you will hear it. So if you want a fanless PC, you can definitely find those. They just won't perform as nicely as uh, this one will perform. On the front, you've got an SD card slot here. So if you uh, don't want to take it apart and put the hard drive in, you can add some external storage via an SD card. It will stick out a bit, but this is a desktop machine, so it won't go too far. The card does tend to get stuck in there, so you have to kind of wiggle it out uh, to get it out of its slot. And there's another two USB 3.0 ports on the front, along with the power button. Now, I should mention, too, that you really don't want to use these for home theater either, uh, not only because it's going to have trouble with some video formats, but these really are not good home theater devices. These are designed to be little replacement desktop computers for people that don't need anything more than a web browser. Uh, there is a, a stand that it comes with, so you can put it on your desk here. You do need a screwdriver to install that stand, so if it's a little wobbly in its uh, base form here, you can put that stand on. You also get a metal bracket in the box, too, to mount it onto the back of a monitor as well. So let's boot this up, see how fast it boots. It boots up very quickly, and then we'll look at its performance. Okay, let's boot it up and see how fast it takes to get to the desktop. One of the best things about desktop class Chrome boxes is how fast they boot up. And this is just the Celeron version, so you can see how fast we're getting into this thing. It's really quick uh, to get up and running. You have to sometimes type your password incorrectly to get in, of course, but uh, there you go. We are already on our desktop and ready to uh, start working here. So I think I'll go visit the New York Times real quick. What I'm also going to do is open up another window here and go to my YouTube channel, and we'll have a video play while we browse around some other things as well. And this
this is where the four gigabytes of RAM might be a little bit more helpful uh, because you can uh, do a little bit more at once with multiple tabs or windows open. This is the four gigabyte version, remember, so you will see a little bit better performance out of uh, the, uh, the four gig version than you will out of the two gig. But for uh, most of what people will do in Chrome OS, again, I think two gigs is going to be fine. But uh, you can see here we've got a video running. We're browsing the web. We can click through different articles here. And uh, that Celeron chip on this device does keep up pretty well with it. Now, one area, though, where it's going to struggle is 4K video playback as well as video playing back at 1080p with 60 frames per second. This is a problem that I've seen on uh, just about every uh, low-end Intel-powered device running with Chrome OS or even the Chrome browser running on other operating systems. They just don't support the hardware acceleration that's available to make these videos run smoother. So we're going to play back this video here. This is a 4K video. Uh, it's running at 1080p right now. It looks fine. The frame rate is fine here. But if I go over to our little gear icon and select the 4K version of the file, uh, you'll see it'll go from smooth playback to uh, pretty much unwatchable playback here. So wait for it to catch up for a second. And then once it starts playing, you'll see it won't play back very well at all. Um, so let that buffer up here. And actually, there it goes. It's actually playing right now. We've got enough uh, video in the buffer, but you can see it's really laggy here. And that is, again, because it's not supporting uh, the hardware acceleration that it has available to it, which is, again, why I don't recommend this device uh, as something to use as a home theater playback device. Because, again, even though the hardware can do it, uh, right now the software that uh, Google has written to run on this hardware doesn't support the video playback at those resolutions or at the 60 frames per second frame rates. And on the Octane benchmark test, we get a score of 14,602. This test measures how well it can render web pages and process JavaScript, all the things that you would typically do on the web. Uh, so that's a very good score and about 20% faster than what we saw in last year's Acer Chromebox. So much, much quicker there and certainly a lot faster than what you might see on uh, some of the mobile Celeron chips that we're seeing in many other Chromebooks out there, including some from Acer. Now, if you want this performance in a portable Chromebook, uh, the Acer C740 that we looked at uh, probably a couple of months ago is about the same performance here. It's a really good Chromebook, one of my favorites actually, because it is so fast. Uh, so that one is definitely one to look at if you like the performance on this one but want something portable. The cool thing with that C740 uh, is that you can plug it into a monitor and basically turn it into a Chromebox if you choose. So uh, you do have that flexibility. But if you're looking for something that's an uh, inexpensive desktop that's great for schools or uh, friends that don't really do too much on their computer beyond some light white word processing and web browsing, I think this might be a really good choice for them because, again, it's not very expensive. It keeps itself up to date, uh, very low maintenance, especially if you are the go-to tech person. So I could definitely recommend uh, one of these for that. And it's good to see Acer continuing to make their investment in Chrome OS, which I think is a very good operating system for a lot of consumers. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.